Good afternoon. Um, my name is Rashan Smith, and today I'll be talking about testing Web Apps 101. Um, so before we get started, I'll just give a little bit about myself. Um, so I went to Skidmore College in New York. I'm a recent grad going on three years out of school. Um, I majored in computer science and international affairs. Um, and during my time in college, I went to a lot of hackathons and conferences, and that's kind of how I got involved in learning different things. So although I really focused on Java in college, that's what we were taught, um, I was really eager to learn about other things like blockchain and like what's Node.js and all these other cool frameworks. And so conferences and hackathons was my way to explore that. And that's how I ended up here. Um, <laughs> so I work at Red Hat. I'm an associate consultant and I do a lot of travel work. Um, and besides what I do at work, I'm very passionate about traveling. Was me last Christmas, I went skydiving. And then um, I'm originally from the Bahamas, so last summer, actually, I went to a, a hackathon in New York City focused on blockchain. That was my first introduction to blockchain. And from there, I met people from the Bahamas as well, and we worked to organize a hackathon and conference for um, teenagers in the Bahamas to learn about blockchain and create apps there as well. So that was a cool opportunity for me to get an introduction into public speaking in a conference setting. Um, and it's something I'm really passionate about. How do we take these really cool technology concepts and make them um, easy for people that don't come from a technical background, easier for them to understand? So that's something I really enjoy doing. Um, and in addition to being at Red Hat and doing a lot of um, volunteer work and conference work, I recently started um, volunteering with an organization called the Information Technology Disaster Resource Center. And it's a pretty cool way to combine my double major in computer science and international affairs. Um, if you're interested, I would also invite you to volunteer. But what they do is they go to any natural disaster and they provide IT support. So last year I was able to actually go back home to the Bahamas and help um, deploy um, routers to provide Wi-Fi for the police force and um, these clinics to allow them to communicate with other people. And um, actually, this month, I went to Puerto Rico to help with the earthquake efforts. I helped with the FEMA efforts there, helping them visualize data to see who's in the base camps and the population and um, all of the inventory, helping them with that as well. And they also do things locally with um, wildfires and things happening within the United States too. So that's something I'm also really passionate about. As you can see here, there's nothing about Drupal, <laughs> as I mentioned. I'm very new to it, um, but I was really excited to come to this conference because I participated in an online hackathon about web automation testing. Um, I'll talk about the company later, but pretty much it was a cool opportunity for me to see how um, testing is involved in all aspects of a web application. As a software developer, I mostly focus on like JUnit tests and working with APIs, and that's the only part of testing that I'm familiar with. But through this hackathon, I was able to see how testing affects all parts of the application from the front end and the back end. So um, my goal for this talk is just to give you all an introduction into what testing is from a manual perspective and an automation perspective. And hopefully, if it's not something that you're implementing, you can see how you can incorporate it into what you do in your daily work. Um, before we get started, can I just get a poll of who's here? Who, who here is familiar with testing in general? Got a lot of people. Um, manual testing, automated testing, visual automated testing. Okay, cool. And mostly Drupal. Any other like? What programming languages do you normally use? Or what programs do you normally deal with? Most of my automated testing is RSpec, which is a Ruby. Mm -hmm. I've heard of that. Mm -hmm. PHP unit. PHP. OK. And what's the demographic of like um, technical background programmers? Like, Who's programmers here? OK. Non-programmers. OK. Some mix. Yeah, exactly. So a nice mix. Yeah, okay. Cool, cool. So, first thing I'd like to talk about is what is web testing. So, one of the reasons why I was really interested in this topic was because although I do Java development at work, I oftentimes find myself doing side projects, whether it's just something, learning a tutorial or doing a freelance project. Someone's asking me to make a website or a web application, and 
these are questions that I would have really thought of coming from my back-end Java perspective. So I've created this website, this web application. It's doing something, but before you launch it, these are the questions you should probably think of. First of all, is the website or the web app informative? Is it providing information, the, the thing that it's meant to do? Second question, is it accessible? Um, I know there was a talk earlier about accessibility. I wasn't able to go to it, but that's something that um, is rising in terms of awareness, like how do we make our web applications more accessible? Is it user friendly? Again, I'm a back end developer, so I'm not thinking about the user's experience. I'm thinking more of like the algorithms and the things that wouldn't normally appear on the website. So although it could work on my end, if I deploy the website, the customer or the user may not even be able to interact with it properly. So essentially these are like major questions to think about when you're developing a website. Um, and there are many ways to test the website. So these are the main ways. And I will, through my talk, I will demonstrate about two of them, mostly the functionality and usability testing. So functionality testing. When we look at a web application, these are the things that the, the user will be interacting with most of the time. So this is like the forms, the text boxes, the links. Sometimes they work, but as you will discover later on, when you make changes in your web application, you may make a change that may have a negative effect on something else in your application. So that's something that you need to keep in mind when you're developing a web application and testing it. Usability testing. How friendly is the app? Are the um, forms aligned? Are the columns aligned? Accessibility testing. Are people with different abilities able to interact with your web application properly? These are things to keep in mind as well. Interface testing. As I mentioned, this is where my strength lies, but at the same time, I wasn't paying attention to the other ones. Um, interface testing, this would be like using Postman, interacting with the APIs, making sure that um, the front end is connecting with the back end, the databases are working properly, things like that. We also have to test for that in a web application. Compatibility testing, does your web application work across different browsers? Um, then I remember one of my first jobs that happened a lot where there would how be a software change and for some reason it wouldn't work on Firefox but it's still working on Internet Explorer and you're like, what's going on? <laughs> um, so that's a really big deal when it comes to web application and uh, web application development um, and it's something that people tend to not pay attention to. Security testing, of course, very important. Um, is your website protected? Um, is it vulnerable to like SQL injections? Um, protected against harmful or unauthorized actions? Security is very important. And then performance testing, how does your website perform against workloads? So if there's a peak or a certain time where there's a bunch of users going at your website or web application at once, will your website um, survive all of that? Or if all of your resources are at capacity and they're being used, do you have a load balancer in place in the back end? What do you have in place to accommodate all these different situations that your web application could experience? So there's a lot of different things you can test in a web application, which is pretty cool for me. Mm -hmm. um, but fortunately, I can only focus on about two of them today, mm -hmm. <laughs> which would mostly be the functionality testing and the usability testing. So manual testing. This is the traditional way that web applications have normally been tested. What this means is that you essentially you create a web, a web application, it's deployed, and you just have someone go in, they actually type in, for example, in this presentation I'll be using a login page. So the manual way of testing that would be having someone go in, typing in the username, typing in the password, click login, make sure that the right page pops up, log out, make sure that the right page pops up, make sure that the right permissions are used and all of that, along with it stuff. Um, so there are pros and cons to doing it that way. First of all, it's cheaper and it's easier to onboard. You don't have to know how to code to do that. Anyone can really do that. Um, and it's also a cheaper initial investment. You don't have to buy any particular software to do that. You just have someone go in and do that repeatedly. Um, but it's also better for short-term projects and projects where the GUI changes frequently. So if I'm working on a side project, I may not necessarily want an automated framework because I'm just developing a really quick website, maybe just testing something new. I don't need to put in some long system to automate it all the time if I'm only going to be interacting with the website for a while or the web application for a while. However, the cons of that is it can be time consuming and less reliable. We are humans. We are prone to making mistakes sometimes. Um, 
And it can be expensive in the long run as well once your application becomes more scaled out. So when we look at automated testing, and I think this graph is cool because it shows the spot where um, cost, of, you know, cost over time, and it shows where at some point it's going to be more cost effective for you to start using automated testing once your application is um, scaled out more of a long-term project. Um, so the pros to automated testing, and in this situation, whereas in manual testing you had someone typing in username, password, click the button, shows up everything, they make sure it's visually correct, log out. In this case, you actually have software tools that go in and do it for you, and I'll go through that later on in the presentation. But what are the pros and cons of this as well? Maybe automated testing isn't for everything, like I mentioned before. So some of the pros of automated testing is that, it, again, it's cost effective in the, loss, in the long run. It also is faster and efficient, and it's also it also allows for you to have uh, a report of the results that could be shared among your organization or to keep track of your results as well. So, um, however, the cons, it can be expensive. Again, having manual testers, you don't need to buy any software. You just have them start coding. They don't have to learn how to code. But with automated testing, it requires programming. Sometimes you may buy a software or a framework. You may use a framework, and there's going to be time for the person to onboard to that and figure that out. Um, so those are things that are going to add to the cost. And then it also can test for everything, um, and we'll go on to discuss that. But you may have to find, maybe you might need a hybrid solution where certain things are tested manually versus some things being tested um, in an automated way. And if there are any questions along the way, just let me know. So today I'll be demoing the Selenium WebDriver. So it's a free and open source automation test tool. Um, I'll be using Java because that's my primary programming language. Um, but in order to use it, you also need a basic understanding of HTML and CSS elements. Um, yeah. So, with automated testing using Selenium, this is like the pseudo code of what's happening, and then I will show the code. So, in this in this demo, we're going to be automating logging into a web page. So putting in the username, password, um, clicking the login, and making sure that the right page is popping up. So what are the steps to doing that in code? And although I'm doing it in Java, it's going to be the same across every other programming language. So I thought it was um, beneficial to just have the steps so that when you leave, you'd be able to um, apply that to the programming language of your choice. So. You would create the Selenium web, web driver in, instance, so there would be an API. You would import that into your um, IDE. Um, you would choose the web browser, so I'll be using Chrome, but you can also use Firefox or um, Internet Explorer, what, whatever your choice is. Then, once you have the driver, you will point the driver to the website that you are looking to test. So you would put in the URL that you want to test. Once you are at the URL, this is where you have to go into the HTML and find the elements that you want to check for. So in this case, we'll be looking for, it's a form, first of all. So we'll be looking for the username and the password in the form. Once we've found those elements, we will perform the actions, which is inputting the username and the password, and then clicking the login button. And then, once that is done, we will validate that once you click the, the login button, the right page, which would be the logged in page, pops up. And that's how we know that the web page has worked the way it should have with those specific buttons because there are other things you could test for as well. But here we're just making sure that the login button actually logs into the website. And then you would close the driver. And this is a pretty simple um, test, but you can imagine that you can add a bunch of other things to test on your website. but. For demo purposes, we'll, ju we'll just be focusing on a basic example. So there, this is the internet.org.com. There are actually websites that are dedicated to people that are trying to learn on, on web testing with Selenium. So this is one of them that I found. And if you actually just go to the main URL without the login, they have a bunch of other cool websites that you can test with different features like pop-up buttons and different columns and things that you can test, but I chose to focus on the login page. So 
we will log into the page. They have the username and password there for demo purposes, it's not safe. Um, log in, and then this is the page that should pop up once you log in. And so for this test case, we're make, how we're gonna test if this is the right page is that we're just gonna look at the URL and make sure that the URL is secure because we started off at login, and so once you log in, it should be secure. Of course, there are other things that we should probably test for once we're logging in, but this is just to give a basic overview of how walking through testing a, a web app works. So as I mentioned before, in step four, we have to find the HTM elements of what we're looking for. So here, we're looking for the username, the password, and the login button. So if you, normally when you go to a web page, if you right click and <coughs> click inspect element, um, I think it's expect that, inspect element. At the bottom, it'll show you all of the source code to the page and you can highlight and it'll show you like the different paddings of what connects to what. And so here, we'll be looking, when we um, test for the website, our code will be looking for the ID that has username. It'll be looking for the ID that is password. And then, because um, the button doesn't have an ID, we will, we will just be looking for a button that has the text with login in it because that's the only button on the site that has login on it. <laughs> so these are the three things we'll be looking for in our um, test. And so in Java, I tried to make sure that it's easy to follow. So we create the web driver brought it in, create the web browser to connect with the driver. So here we're using Chrome, so Chrome driver, driver.get, and then we're navigating to the first website that allows you to log in. So that's the login slash login. And then step four and five, find and perform action on HTML elements. So driver is a function find element by ID, because I mentioned that we're looking for the form that has the ID of username. And then the way that you would actually put the um, words into the form is to use the dot send keys function. So here we're doing send keys to the username and the password and putting the username and the password. And then for the login button, we, it didn't have an ID, so we had to use XPath, which is another function. And it's finding path that contains a text which is a text, and then the text is login, which was on the button, and then dot click, and then that should click the button. And then how we're validating the result, as I mentioned before, is that um, we're just making sure that the URL is secure because that's the URL, the page that it should go to when you're logged in. Um, and then in Java, you will just use the assert ability, which is um, saying that, um, this is the web, it actually got the website that we expected it to get. So I had the actual URL, that's the one we're, um, the URL we're looking for and the URL that the test actually finds and it compares that and then if it's true, then it's successful. And then the driver closes. Um, and if you don't close it, it just, the pop-up, I'll show you, but the pop-up just stays open and it's just waiting for you to test something else. So, so it's good practice to close the driver every time. So, let's see if I can demo it really quick. So this is the same, that's no, the visual one. So this is the same code here. Uh, so I'll just run that again. And then it will pop up the Chrome web browser. Sometimes it takes a while. And yeah, see, it did it really quick. <laughs> um, but did everyone catch that? Okay. Cool. So that was uh, um, automated testing with Selenium. So as I mentioned before, I go to a lot of hackathons and recently I went to a hackathon that 
uh, of course, you know, they were trying to promote their product, which was Apple Tools, but I liked the way it was set up because they, in order to participate, you were forced to write tests in Selenium and then also write visual um, tests as well. So not only did you understand their tool, but you saw why it was helpful and more efficient and allowed for more people to be involved in the um, test process in a, in a company if you're working with more than one person. Um, and then I put regression testing because that's another word that usually comes up. Um, so one of the, also another reason why people test a lot is because, as I mentioned before, when you make changes in your software, sometimes it affects other things in your application. And if you make a change and it happens to affect something else, that's called a regression. So this is also another um, big term that's used in the testing world, and as a result, tools like Apple Tools can help with that because not only does it allow for software developers to be involved, but because of their platform, you can create reports and allow for other people to see what's going on and have a better understanding of testing. Um, and uh, let's, yeah, let's go through the concept. So. With Selenium, I showed you how I had a list similar to this, which was it showed the different steps. With Apple Tools, it's pretty similar. The only difference is instead of looking for individual HTML elements, it's actually just taking a screenshot of the page. So this is really great for, um, what was it? Usability testing and functionality testing in terms of just seeing that the web page looks how it's supposed to. Um, so what it does, you create the web driver. Again, um, if you're using Selenium, there's also an Apple Tools Selenium API that you can use with it as well. So you create the web driver, choose your web browser, and then it has this function called Open Eyes, which is pretty much just allowing you to look at the page. And then you take a screenshot, and then you close the eyes, and then that screenshot gets uploaded to the platform, the Apple Tools platform. Um, and so I'll kind of separate it here and just in before and after just to show that if you have multiple tests, it will open the eyes before every test and close after each test and all of that cool stuff. But it's doing the same thing. The only difference from before is that it's opening the eyes and then in eyes.open it's just giving a name. So when you go on the Apple Tools um, platform, you will see like the name of your test is like original site for the login page still driver.get, we're still navigating to the page, but all you have to do is do eyes.check window login page, and I'll just take a picture of that. Um, and so I did two tests, I'm not gonna do them now because they're iffy sometimes, but um, I did two tests, one with the regular login page, and then I did another test where um, like I took the password title off the form. Um, and it, can sh it will show how Apple Tools works in finding those errors instead of having to test manually or with Selenium all the time. Um, so the first test is the regular website, all is good. And then the login page edited, um, I took some stuff off and visually it will detect those errors. And then on the app, I'll show you how it detects that and allows you to interact with it. And then you close the eyes and then everything stops. So, okay, I won't even touch it. <laughs> so, I mentioned I did two tests, right? So, the first one is the login page. That was, um, I can show you. This login page, this is the original page, everything looks good. And when you run a test for the first time, that is considered the baseline of the test. So it ran the first test, it ran on the website that actually looked right. And it said, okay, this is how the website is supposed to look. I'm gonna compare every other test to this. So now it knows that, for example, that's where a login page should be, that's where the username should be, that's where the password should be, that's where the login should be. So if you have your web application like at an ideal state, you can create tests for that when it's in its ideal state, and you can create a bunch of batch tests and create that as the baseline so that the application knows this is what we're comparing you um, versions of it to. Then 
I ran the test again, and that's the one that's unresolved. And like I removed the page, and then password is missing from the second form. And because of that, it's unresolved. So <coughs> now I have access to all of the features right now, which is sad. But you see, it highlighted where it noticed things were missing. So for example, it noticed the page was missing. Um, password was missing and because of that it kind of shifted everything up so now everything is off and so what you would do in this and I can't do it now which is that but um, it has these things called annotations so you can like highlight them and you can also collaborate with people so for example if you had someone that's responsible for a certain part of um, the front end you can do these tests and they can log in you can just put an annotation saying hey something's wrong with this part of the page can you check that out um, something's wrong here, can you check that out? And it's kind of like a visual way to keep track of all the different changes in the user interface. Um, and I think it's really cool to be able to have something like that. Um, there are other options, you don't have to use Apple Tools, there are other things that are available. And I believe Selenium also has a visual web driver as well that I didn't get to mess around with. But um, it's, there are a lot of different options if you want to explore that. Um, and so this is this will be more of like an enterprise solution, I believe, because um, I don't have access to all of the features, but um, I thought it was cool to explore as well. So next steps. So I just gave an introduction into like what automated testing means for web applications, what manual testing is, an example of visual testing. Um, they're all really cool, but you know, you don't have to just go and implement them all right away. Like figure out how they apply to what you want to do. You can do more research, read, read blogs on them. I'm still reading up to see what else is out there in the web application testing world. Um, so I would encourage you to just explore more about what testing means to you and like explore the parts that you haven't thought of if you have started thinking about or you work in testing. Um, Test Automation University, so they were part of the hackathon as well and they actually have a really good library of testing in different languages. In fact, they also have and the things I showed you, they actually have videos on that as well. So I would highly recommend going there. Um, they're really popular, really um, good content, and I would recommend following up with their content if you want to learn more about web application testing. And yeah, are there any questions? Is it possible to set the resolution, or is it just pick the one that you're currently on? Uh, like if you want to test like a web, so you you know make a portrait and so on. Yes, you can do that. I actually, uh, I didn't do it here, but there are ways for you to focus, like especially with the visual testing as well, you can focus on a certain part of the page, like you don't have to test the whole thing um, just to make things faster and more efficient. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.